Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and this is SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage, non-stop coverage, of HP Discover. We're here with folks from the non-stop group at HP. Uh, Randy Meyer is to my right, and Rick Lewis is the VP and general manager of the non-stop division. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Randy's a, a chief, here. chief technologist. You've been on, you're a CUBE alum. You were yep. here last year at Absolutely. HP Discover. We were talking about that. And, um, well, we're here again. Yeah, and, uh, thanks for having us. Fantastic event, you're welcome. Um, I was over at your pavilion uh, a, little, a little bit earlier, last couple of days actually. Good action going on. Yeah, really a lot passionate of flow, group. A lot of people. Uh, they're, they're, they're partners. They're, yeah. You know, it's, um, That's a great word, passionate. The partners are just excited about what's going on. The customers we're talking to, tremendous amounts of traffic, tremendous amounts of buzz in terms of what's going on. The overall excitement about HP and the excitement about what's going on in our business as well. So yeah, I mean, lots of excitement. And all this talk about cloud and you know big data, you know, the, the core mission critical stuff tends to get lost. Um, that's got to hurt a little bit, but at the same time, you can draft on some of those trends, can't you? Oh, I mean, absolutely. It turns out that things like cloud and big data just play up the need for systems got to work all the time. I mean, in a world today where everybody's got a smartphone, everybody's got a pad, everybody's got a tablet that they're carrying around, it's always connected to a network, whether it's Wi-Fi or 4G or something else. So, if you're running a business, when's a good time in a world where everyone's connected like that to not be available? Right. So Rick, give us a business update. What's going on in the, sure. in the division? Just uh, take us through that. So, and I'm relatively new to nonstop. I started there in January and you know, a couple of impressions that I've had so far uh, now leading the business. Uh, business is healthy. Nonstop's been doing great uh, the last couple of years showing growth in the, uh, the sale of servers and, and uh, associated services and software, et cetera. So very happy with the business. We're riding a couple technology waves, the, the rollout of uh, 3G going to 4G, uh, where we're a dominant player as well as financial payments. Uh, dominant player there as well, and those businesses are booming, and nonstop's the preferred solution in those spaces. So uh, we're doing very well. Customers are excited, customers are passionate, like no other customers in the world. That's another thing I've noticed since being here. So uh, it's going very well in nonstop. Yeah, so the history, I mean, you, know, you mentioned the telco infrastructure, that's got, that can't go down, right? I mean, so the 3G to 4G role, it's got to be fantastic. Where are we at with that? Um, you know, it's, it, it's hard for consumers sometimes, you get lost in some of the marketing, everybody all of a sudden, oh yeah, we're 4, 4G too, 4G pops <laughs> up in your phone. I mean, what, how much of that is really 4G, and where are we at, and what's the opportunity look like for you guys? Well, I mean, I think you're on the front end of that, right? Everybody's building out the networks, and then they're getting all of that where it's built out, where it's going to get more stable, they're going to add capacity, they're going to add coverage, and then on top of that, you're going to see more and more services coming on, right? You're going to get a really full-featured, high-speed broadband network that's out there. So now you're going to watch the provision of all sorts of services, frankly, some of which are really cool today and some of which people haven't even thought of yet. And as you get more coverage and you get more access, you're going to see tremendous amounts of data, video, pictures, integration of location information. By the way, that stuff's going to integrate with the back-end systems too, where you say, you're walking by something and an ad targeted to you pops up to give you a coupon for the restaurant you're right in front of, because they know where you are and they can get it to you right now when it can influence you. Talk about the total available market that you guys serve. Is the, is the total market for applications that require no downtime growing. People don't think of it as a growth market, but if, you know, when, they, when they connect it to a product, like a mainframe, for yep. example. But when you think about the number of apps that are require no downtime, do you see that exploding, growing? What's it look like? So, I mean, the market, it's multi-billions of dollars in size, right? And it's actually growing, but not in the way you'd think. What's happening is, applications don't exist as monoliths anymore, right? You'd think of them in the old mainframe days or whatever, you'd build an application, it all sits in one place. Applications now are pieces and parts and services from all over the place. So you say, I've got to show what my inventory looks like and I've got to take the payment and I've got to create the ability to link that to knowing if I've got it in my store or it's somewhere else and I've got to ship it somewhere and I've got to calculate shipping costs all these things are sitting out on different parts of applications. Some of them are in traditional IT, some of them may be on your private cloud environment sitting on different technologies. Some you might go get from the public cloud or just the public web somewhere. The application exists only in your browser there. 
right? There's all these pieces and parts, so guess what? There's a lot of pieces of that application that you say, I gotta have them there all the time. If you're trying to sell somebody something and you don't know if it's in stock, you might sell the same thing four times. So you get different needs of that. So our job is to find the pieces that say, which of those are fundamental and critical versus you say, I can, I was, I can distribute or maybe I can get it from somewhere else. So we're actually seeing a, kind of this renaissance. Availability matters to people. It really does in terms of how they build their applications, but it's about putting the ecosystem together. And some of it's on nonstop, some of it might be on a Linux farm, some of it might be on HP UX doing different pieces. How do you integrate that into one seamless, complete whole that says, this is what my application looks like to the user because availability is at the user level. It's not measured at some server level. Not the light on the disk drive. It's no, <laughs> it's not the blinky it's light on the, the disk drive. Sees, it's right? can you buy that product? Can you make your phone call work? Can you send that message? Can you get cash from the ATM? You know, think about it, ATM. Back back in the days when I started working, ATM was a single function device. I could put money in, I could take money out, and it had a little green screen. Now it's a full function PC that can do everything from let me do all kinds of banking transactions to take out a loan to send me ads for things that yeah. are there. Hey. It's a completely different paradigm. So the reason for my question is, I mean, you see these web giants really innovating, um, you know, to huge scale. Uh, you see, you know, the Amazon phenomenon, you know, retail is just amazing. Um, and, you know, uh, my, the premise is it's putting pressure on traditional IT to, to respond. And I'm just wondering if it has a ripple effect on, on your business. Well, but I mean. The ripple effect is positive. I yeah. mean, at some point you got to pay for it, right? You're buying something on Amazon, you bring up your web page, all that. Eventually you're going to use a credit card. Those credit card transactions are mostly processed on nonstop systems. So. Uh, it just helps our business. The big trend you know, in, in the broad swath of IT is to virtualize applications. Um, is that not happening in your world because people just don't want something getting in the way? Well, we've actually been virtualizing applications since about the mid-1980s. <laughs> so, glad as, as the mainframe, right? Well, right, we're, we're actually kind of glad everyone's come around to understanding what it really takes to do that. You think about in a non-stop world, the application is virtualized. If I need more capability, you go say, just spread it out across more processors. If I need more storage, just go grab the pieces that you need that are configured in there and add it there. If I need to go do work in parallel, let all the processors in the cluster go do the work, it's funny. People think of us like we're a mainframe, but in reality, we really look like a big parallel cluster, almost yeah. a grid, and have for 30 years. Yeah, that scalability's always been designed in, hasn't it? Yep. Um, so what else has changed in your, in your business? Um, you know, in the last couple of years or since we last met. Yeah, well, I mean, boy, what's changed? Uh, I'll tell you a couple things that haven't changed. We talked about passion of customers, passion of the, the team that supports a nonstop uh, development environment, um, the engineers and their, their uh, uh, unbelievable dedication to the customers and, and uh, resolving issues and, and figuring out new places to go. The other thing I would say is um, modernization, right? Standardization and modernization. Uh, for a long time, nonstop was on its own custom hardware. In the last several years, we've moved that all to standard hardware. It's the mm -hmm. same hardware that we sell our uh, Unix-based uh, uh, billing systems and things like that. So the hardware is standardized. In the software arena, we've been on a modernization journey. And the software is now modern. We support Java and all kinds of uh, the latest, greatest middleware, uh, and that's really opened us up to new ISVs, new applications, new things that fit well with uh, with our core value proposition. Things that build on the financial payments, adjacencies to that, things like fraud detection, et cetera, all of that is now ported to nonstop, and so the value prop just continues to broaden. So when you think about credit card transactions, you just mentioned fraud, um, it's a big push these days, talking about real time. Yep. And I connect with those themes um, that you just mentioned. Uh, I want to talk about real time, and, uh, and from an architectural standpoint, I want to talk about flash and how that fits into. Yeah. How, and, and, and I define real time as uh, what my colleague David Floyer uh, really gave me this. He said, it's before you lose the customer, you can react and respond. <laughs> That's Ab what really matters. Absolutely. <laughs> In today's world, customers don't wait, mm -hmm. right? If you can't serve them, they're going to, they're one click away from going to somewhere else. Or if I can't get cash from this ATM. Literally, the last time I went through um, 
Petro. There were five ATMs lined up, one from each different bank, by the way, all my customers. <laughs> I could pick any one of them. I chose one of our customers. If that ATM hadn't been working for some reason, I'm going to the next one right now. I'm not waiting for those sorts of things. So it really is, it's about real time. The for me, it's the betting machine at the racetrack. Yeah. <laughs> that was 20 years ago, actually. Put money in, take now. money I out. Can't, I can't bet anymore. <laughs> I got better things to spend my hard earned money on. We're in Vegas, you can <laughs> bet on anything you want. <laughs> Uh, it's been a long time. Like I said, I got four kids. But, uh, but it's sorry. the interaction. Yeah. It's that moment of interaction with a customer. If you're there, not only do you get the business, right? You get the transaction fee or you deliver whatever it is, but you build loyalty. You build goodwill with that customer. It takes days, weeks, months, years sometimes to gain a customer. You can lose one in seconds. So uh, I think last time we might have talked about you know, I.O. architectures and yep. my old friend Derek Ginger who taught me many, uh. many things about storage when I was a young pup. But yep. so now we're seeing this notion of flash um, permeate on the other side of the channel, a persistent resource. Yep. How are you taking advantage of that to affect real time? Well, and so that's a great opportunity. We just brought out a whole series of new products to leverage some of the flash things that are there in solid state drives to say there's a certain class of customer, a certain class of application that say, I really need to drive down some of the latency. So if you're you know, one of the stock exchanges in Asia doing some trading where you say, I've got a hot stock all of a sudden, right? I got to go deal with this and go manage all of those sorts of things. You want to go eliminate as much latency as you can in that space. Same thing if you're doing a parallel database query. You say, okay, if it's in flash, I can go eliminate tons of the time it takes to go find the data and then assemble it back quickly. So we're seeing lots of customers wanting to move that direction to say I can increase my throughput at the same time as I'm decreasing my response time so I can get my performance up in both axes by leveraging some of that technology. And we'll see more and more of that. You're seeing larger memory, you're seeing larger cache sizes, you're seeing solid state drives, you're seeing you know all of these elements saying how do you go respond even more quickly. The other change back from way back when, when we were doing I.O. architectures, many of the things that used to happen were human beings talking to the machines, right? A human being's response time is measured in seconds. Now they're machines talking to machines. And guess what? Machines measure response time in milliseconds. So completely different paradigm when you're thinking about that. Yeah, and I think it was I think it was Goldman Sachs who said that for every millisecond we can shave off our latency in our applications, it drops a hundred million dollars to the bottom line. Yep. yep. Um, so, you know, people always talk about how flash is more expensive than spinning disk, but if you can shave a hundred or drop a hundred million dollars to the bottom line, I don't think people will mind paying a 30, it, 40, it, 50, 60. It's not about what it costs, right. it's about yeah. the value it generates. Yeah, I mean, right. that's always been your business too, right? Absolutely. So Rick, Absolutely. You're, you said you're new, but you're, you've been at HP for a while, I've right? I've been at HP 25 years. Yeah, yeah. okay. I, up through the R&D ranks from chip design, all kinds of chip design, system design, uh, now uh, at the same time leading hardware and firmware development. So what's your goal with the, uh, with the division? Boy, sort of near term and mid term? Yeah, I often get this question, hey, did you come into nonstop to radically change the strategy or something like that? We're not on a radical strategy change. We were going to refine our strategy, get more clarity, make sure we're catching the right waves uh, around things like the cloud, uh, around information optimization, continue to improve our security, all the themes that Meg's talked about in her keynotes here at Discover, and uh, really just be clear about what things are we focusing on and how are we going to continue the health of the nonstop business. So, no major strategy change. Hopefully, in the near term, we can keep the growth that we've had going on right now and make sure we're still thrilling our customers, because that's really what it's about. We've got passionate customers, we're adding customers by the day, if we can get those as passionate as the ones we currently have, you know, we'll work wonders. How's the go-to-market work in, in your group? Do you have a specialized sales force? Yeah, or? so the go-to-market is almost all direct sales. We have a specialized sales force paired with solution architects that are a big part of that, working with customers, because we're not selling boxes, we're selling solutions to business problems, right? So it's all about how can we help them go take payments faster, take them more cheaply, move the, move the messages around the telecoms network, et cetera. So that's all there. We also have a large ecosystem of both what I'd call applications ISVs that are specialized in those places and 
tools and infrastructure people that help us complete the solution. So this is about direct sales, go to market that way with solutions architects helping them, but at the same time leveraging all of our partners who have application expertise, tools infrastructure expertise, and then we obviously leverage the power of HP's services organization to say, a lot of times you need deployment services, design services, application services, and we can bring that to bear as well. That's part of this, the broader HP really helps us from the standpoint of partners, technology, services, and being able to put that together for a customer and make it sing and dance. HP nonstop, uh, the infrastructure behind all those credit card transactions that you do, the phone calls you make on your cell phone, it's, I always really love and enjoy talking to you guys. It's, yeah. uh, it's really a pleasure. Thank you very much for Thanks course, for having thank us. Great. Pleasure to meet you, Enjoyed Randy. It. Thank you. Yeah. All right, keep it right there. We'll be right back with Bethany Mayer, and uh, keep it right there. This is SiliconANGLE TV.